What's up guys? Lady Survival here and today I'm chilling in front of my epic World of Warcraft area um, because I felt like it. I recently uh, kind of rearranged my shelf and cleaned it off and dusted it off because it was pretty bad. So I figured I may as well utilize my epic little space and film right here. So today I just kind of wanted to talk about stuff in terms of like my future and the whole K-1 visa process, me moving to the States, my kind of like wedding plans and just kind of stuff that's going on. Um, with the K-1 visa process, Derek and I started it back in January 2020. Um, we originally met for the first time and kind of played World of Warcraft and met for the first time around May or June of like 2019 I believe and then we really got to know each other on voice chat and we had our first visit in November and then we like immediately got engaged when I went to visit. It was like literally the next day um, of me being with him in the states that he proposed to me and I was like yes oh my god. <laughs> Um, and then and then by January we decided to file for the K-1 visa and Derek took care of all of that stuff which was so nice because oh my god it was a lot of paperwork and he barely even like told me about how intense it was because he didn't want to like burden me with it so he just took care of everything and it let me tell you like it was like a stack of paper like it was like a lot of stuff that had to be filled in and he took care of everything which was so sweet and then um I think we had to pay about like $530 I think I don't remember exactly but something like that and we split that and then the process was supposed to only take like I think between six to nine months or something which is why we went with the K-1 visa instead of the like spouse visa um which the spouse one I think can take up to like two years but once you do get your visa you're like an American citizen you're, I'm, I would be good to just like move to the states and I'd be good to work and everything like I'd be fully good to go whereas the K-1 visa is basically like it's a shorter process what it was supposed to be but then COVID kind of ruined that but it's supposed to be a pretty short process so that I can get to the states or the fiance can get to the states as quickly as possible and then you do the rest of the stuff like while you're there so essentially once I get my K-1 visa and I move there we're gonna have to go through the process of me actually becoming a citizen and getting my green card and all that stuff and being able to work and blah 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 while I'm there so it's basically like a quicker way to get to your fiance but I mean, if it's very important for you to be able to work as soon as you get there, then that one wouldn't really work for you is kind of the best way to explain it. But, um, so yeah, anyways, so when we filed for it in January 2020, we were kind of expecting, like, August, September of 2020 would be when we get to live together, but COVID completely slowed things down, and same with Trump being president, he basically put a complete stop on all of the, uh, immigration stuff, so... Um, we got to the point where we got our NOA2, which is basically the notice that, like, your petition thing has been approved. I'm not so good at, like, all the terminology and all the steps. Derek knows a lot more about it, so I don't fully know if I'm explaining it right, but basically it means that, like, at that point, once you get your NOA2, it means that it's supposed to start moving very quickly, and we got that on June 1st, 2020, and we were like, oh my god, like, we're gonna be able to live together soon, it's a few months away, and then all of a sudden, nothing. Like, basically, we went from June, uh, went through all of June, July, August, September, October, November, January, February, March, so literally like nine months past June but at that point if COVID and Trump wasn't a thing that's when it should have started to speed up and it should have only been like two months but yeah we went nine months without hearing anything at all which is why we ended up doing our really really long visit that I just went did from um, October to March um, and then we finally got the notice that our visa had been shipped or sent over to the Montreal Embassy here in Canada so now things are starting to move pretty quickly and uh, basically I came home from my five month trip with him on March 28th I believe or 27th somewhere around there and um, yeah things are going really quickly now we just got the notice like I think last Friday a week ago that we have our interview date or my interview date so I have to go down to Montreal around the middle of May. I'm not going to say the exact date just because that's too personal but yeah I have to go and like 
travel all the way to Montreal and get a hotel and I have my interview and then I will find out if I got my visa or not and I'm pretty sure how it works is like I'll have my little interview and I have to bring like a bunch of paperwork stuff that they're gonna look through like my passport and police records and like proof of like support that I have basically Derek and his grandma has supported me they're like my sponsors for me to move down there so there's like a bunch of paperwork and stuff they're gonna look at and make sure everything's good and legit and um and I have to bring like proof of our relationship so like pictures of us together and like text messages and just all kinds of stuff like airport tickets and all that type of stuff I'm really really excited and then I also have um, a medical coming up that I have to go to at the end of this month because that's one of the things that you have to also bring with you when you go down to do your interview at, in Montreal for me. Um, so yeah, I have to get a medical done. They're gonna do like a chest x-ray and blood work and like a full like physical exam and like make sure I have all my vaccinations and then yeah, so stuff is moving really really quickly at this point. Like probably by June I'm gonna be moving which is literally it's so crazy, I just feel so blessed that I was able to come back home to Canada and go back to work for a couple months and make some more money, hang out with my parents a bit more and see my cats and ah, all this stuff. And just being in my room, like you guys know like my room means a lot to me. A few years ago I moved out into an apartment with a really, really shitty ex-boyfriend and um, I don't know if you guys remember if you've been watching for a long time, I think I made like three or four videos like talking about like wow I'm gonna be saying bye to my bedroom and stuff and yeah. The thing that's different about this time is that like it's actually real like I'm actually engaged I'm moving out of country uh, there's a chance that my parents might move and like get a new house and even maybe move to a new city just because like there's really no reason for them to live where we live right now in this city like there's really no specific ties and they might want to go and move to Windsor where my brother lives um, so yeah, it's just kind of freaky. It's like, whoa, like, this is real. Like, when I pack up my stuff and go, like, it's probably the last time I'm gonna be in this room. So I've been definitely dealing with a lot of, like, emotions, I guess. Um, I'm a very sensitive person, so, um, I'm obviously super, super excited to go and live in the States and be with my fiancé, but at the same time, over the last couple weeks, I've definitely cried a lot. Um, just thinking about that stuff. I don't know why. I feel like I'm gonna cry right now, but it's just like... It's just crazy, like it's kind of weird, like I've always basically lived with my parents other than when I did go out and get an apartment, but I still lived in the same city so I could still see them all the time and stuff, but it's just like, damn, like I know that I'm 25 and stuff, but like I've never been away from home like this and I've never like had that like safety and like the feeling of like wherever my parents are is my home and kind of stuff and it's just... It's definitely freaky and also just leaving my cats and stuff. I really did want to bring Jody, my black cat that I got in my apartment, but I don't want to traumatize him with like flying <laughs> over to the States. He's already pretty weird. He's a pretty strange cat and my ex that I lived with um, didn't treat him too well. He definitely threw him around and punched a lot of things and was just very loud and aggressive around him. So Jody's already very like... <laughs> scared and stuff and uh yeah plus my parents love him so I figured I'd leave him here and uh Derek's mom that he lives with right now has like a feral pet so that wouldn't work at all like it would literally probably kill Jody. so even if I did want to bring Jody, it would have to be like after when Derek and I actually find our own place and then I'd have to like ship Jody out here I don't even know how all that would work and I just feel like it's too complicated and, and uh, Derek and I want to get a lot of our own cats anyways so I think it might be better for us to just like go get two kitties like once we're all moved in and situated in our own place we're gonna get two kittens together that are like used to being together like you know um, so I feel like it wouldn't really be good to have Jody thrown in the mix there because I don't know if Jody would like raise kittens well he might make them very skittish and weird so it's a little weird because I gotta leave my kitties and I'm really sad because my older cat Parker I think he's like 14 that's like oh my god like I'm just scared for the day when like my parents might text me or call me and tell me that he's passed away or is sick so it's really it's really hard. I love my kitties so much. It's really hard. I'm trying not to cry, but I clearly am just thinking about it. Like I said, I'm very sensitive. I love my kitties, but 
I'm definitely ready to move out and be with Derek and stuff so yeah god trying not to be like a wreck right now but yeah that's basically what's going on in terms of my life and moving um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to move all my stuff we were gonna try to get like a skid and like ship it through like one of those moving companies but I think that that's around like two thousand to three thousand dollars or something so I'm maybe considering just like shipping a bunch of boxes out of as much stuff as I can and then maybe bringing on like some maybe two suitcases of like checked luggage on the plane um, either that or we could rent like a truck and drive it but that's kind of complicated because with the, with the borders and stuff and I don't drive that would mean Derek would have to like fly out here and we'd have to rent a truck and then like him drive it but I don't know if he comes here I think he has to quarantine for 14 days so it's just really crazy and there's no way that my parents could drive the whole way because that would just be crazy and also not to mention that's just like also I don't think that that works with the borders I think that then my parents might have to quarantine when they come back and it's just like COVID's made things so complicated so I think either way I either have to ship like a skid of stuff or just send like boxes um but there's definitely things that I don't really know how I would ship them like I have a really really big full body mirror over there and I don't really know if that would be shippable or anything or if it would even be worth trying to ship it um then i have my gaming chair and i'd probably have to disassemble that and i think i got rid of the original box that it was in so it's just like i don't really know the best way to do it i feel like putting everything on a skid would be the simplest because then it's like i don't have to worry about finding specific boxes to fit specific things i could just like put everything onto like a big thing but like it's definitely it's definitely very stressful and it sucks not having Derek here with me to help me like I mean we're obviously we're long distance so it's like I kind of have to do things on my own um I'm not very good at adulting so it's kind of like oh my god but uh yeah that's pretty much all of that stuff um other than that once I do get my visa and once I arrive in the states um we have to get married within 90 days so um I think that what's gonna work out so say if I'm like moving there by like June 1st it could be a little longer than that but let's just say if it's June 1st and we have 90 days that means I can either get married sometime in June, July, or August um, and out of those three months I would probably prefer August and I was already looking and there's like a Friday the 13th on August and I feel like I might want to get married then even though it's like bad luck or whatever but I just think it's cool because I would love to get married on Halloween but I just don't think that my visa is going to time out like I'd have to like wait longer um, because basically when I get my visa I have six months to move to the states so I could technically get my visa by around like June 1st and then I could wait a couple months and then move and then the 90 day starts from when I get there but I don't really want to wait because obviously I just want to be with Derek as soon as possible and things are so like unsure with COVID like I don't know like what if something crazy happens and they're like no one can go anywhere no matter what like borders are completely locked down at this point we've had so much traumatizing stuff happen with the k1 visa and with covid and like so many things that we never expected to happen have happened so it's like i don't really want to wait and risk anything like as soon as my i get my visa i'm just gonna go as soon as possible because i just want to be with him so yeah um so yeah more than likely i will get married on august the 13th because it's a friday the 13th and i think that that sounds cool and in terms of our wedding i'm pretty sure we're just gonna have like a courthouse wedding and like just a couple of his family members will come and stuff and then later on we'll have like an actual like wedding celebration thing and I think we're gonna do it at medieval times in California so yeah basically I don't know when we would do that exactly but hopefully when COVID clears up so it's like not a big deal to do that type of stuff and we're totally thinking of like by this point we're gonna want to be streaming on Twitch and doing lots of YouTube so we're hoping that we'll kind of amass a little bit of a following and then maybe we will do like a patreon for our wedding and different levels will have like different things like maybe if like if you donate a certain amount you can actually come to our medieval times wedding with us or like you know like just little things maybe we can do something before or after the actual medieval times event that people can come to but basically we would love to have just a bunch of like other nerds that like fantasy stuff and world of warcraft and lord of the rings and just that whole vibe and stuff so that's what we would love to do so I've been looking at a lot of wedding dresses online and trying to find like the perfect like elven fantasy 
costume thing. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna get yet. I do technically already have two wedding dresses but I don't really know if I like them that much. One of them is a random white wedding dress that I found at Value Village like just thrift store shopping a couple years ago and it fits me and it looks pretty good but like I don't know if it's like the dress to wear. Um, and then I also ordered a black wedding dress off of AliExpress I think and it's alright but I just, I don't know, I just don't really know if I really like them that much so I'm trying to find something that's like perfect or whatever but at the same time I don't care that much because I'm not a big like like I'm not gonna host like some big crazy wedding with like a bunch of family members and like I don't want to spend too much money so it's kind of like whatever I'll just wear like whatever maybe I'll just wear like a cheap dress um costume Halloween looking medieval thing for the medieval time celebration thing but yeah I mean it is kind of nice because the wedding that we're gonna have like when we have to get married within 90 days I mean like that's basically just gonna be a really quick easy courthouse wedding thing so I don't really care so much about that wedding dress but when it comes to the medieval times celebration thing I want to be looking cool. I think that that's pretty much everything. Um, if you guys have any suggestions of where I can look for um, sort of like medieval or elven looking wedding dresses let me know down below. I've mostly been looking on like Etsy and then a little bit on AliExpress and Wish and just trying to find like cheap stuff and I've been looking at like elven tiaras and circlets and all that type of stuff and just jewelry and capes and all kinds of fun stuff but if you guys have any suggestions of where else I can look or if you see anything specific on Etsy or anything specific anywhere let me know. I think that that's all I wanted to talk about, just a little kind of filling you guys in on everything that's going on, and I hope that you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!